So yes, guys, this is the Insta360 app in 2025. I'm gonna take you on a tour of this app on how it's changed because there have been a lot of changes with this new version. This is definitely the biggest update um, since it's been released. There's a whole new layout, some new fast editing features. And yeah, this is gonna be an overview. I'll try to be as succinct as possible, take you through every button, every page, everything that you need to know but and if you want some really really detailed instructions literally a um step by step uh, idiot proof guide please consider to subscribing to the course i have there's going to be dozens of lessons about how to use this app effectively but in this video you're going to know everything that's new about the app and roughly where everything is which is the most important thing so let's get started Right guys, so this is the new Insta360 app, which has had a large update here in 2025. The layout has moved around, so it's important to... So let's get started. When you open the app, the intro is pretty much the same. We have these kinds of tutorials. Make sure you select whichever camera you're using and then some more will appear. So you'll see plenty of tutorials here as well, but they're quite brief, so um, they don't really show you everything. So just to start off here at the bottom, we have these options here. And if we just go one to, um, from left to right, explore, we're already on the explore tab. Um, you can go up here for you, which is the kind of social network and activities. This is kind of a kind of competition or things you can win or how you can buy some little accessories with this kind of gold stuff. I don't really mess with this, so this isn't really anything I'm interested in. Then if we go to album, this is where your uh, content will be stored, your photos, your videos. Now I've downloaded mine from the camera, so I've just got a few here which we're going to play with. And you'll notice compared to the last version of the app, the, uh, the, the display is a lot clearer. It used to be these kind of circular um, previews which didn't really it was really hard to tell what kind of videos but these are square full screen and the app basically focuses on the person so it's a lot easier to see which video is what I can definitely tell between these what uh, the video contains whereas before it was really hard to tell so that's a good upgrade um, going on to here this is where you control the camera but we're not gonna do that now um, I'm going to show you the controls a little bit later. We're just focusing on the editing portion of the app, but this is where you would connect to your camera. Here we have edit, which is where we have um, our automatic editors. So these kinds of pre-built templates where you just select a bunch of videos and it will apply some text and some, um, some transitions and stuff like that. So we have plenty here. Um, I prefer to edit myself. You also have the shot lab function which is again, a bunch of pre-built template effects, which are some of them quite cool. Like this one is really good, but some of them are a bit gimmicky, but yeah, this is how you can quite easily create these kinds of special effects. And then we have the create a video, which is how you combine multiple videos together. I will show you that in a different video. An auto edit, which is an AI editor, and you select once again, a bunch of videos and it will try and make a uh, combine your videos together in a dynamic way. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. We're gonna go to the album tab and we're gonna go onto one of the videos. We're gonna select this, this one here. And immediately, if you've used the app before, you'll notice some changes. This is not what it looked like before. And I'm gonna take you through everything here. Firstly, um, it's actually a little bit hard to see. Let me just move this down so you can see the all of the options. You have options here on the left-hand side and options here at the bottom. Here, we have this cuts. So this allows you to trim either side. If you want to trim as by the starts at the end, just take off a little bit each side. You could do that. We will leave it for now. Next, we have this kind of little diamond plus and with a plus button. Now this is where you activate the keyframe feature, which was, it's actually one of the more important parts of the whole app. I'm surprised it's kind of hidden in this little area. This uh, next icon, is Dolby Vision, it's just a basically slightly edits the color, the dynamic range, you can see here, makes quite a good effect on the sky. The next icon allows you to activate the linear mode, so that basically removes any warping. So um, 360 cameras, depending on how you zoom in and out, sometimes they have a kind of warped effect and some people don't like that. So if we just tap that, that gets rid of the warp effect. And there are a few more. You, they are actually labeled if you press the arrow button down and you'll see that they are labeled here. And the rest is just to delete and favorites and tag. So those are fairly self-explanatory. 
So now we move on to these options at the bottom. So this one here, if we tap that, this is an AI feature which will try and capture um, certain highlights. So it will guess which parts of the video look the best mark those and then you can easily create a more dynamic video now so we have yes these icons at the bottom and i'm going to use a different video to show you this because uh, this shorter video kind of works better so we have here it's an icon that looks like it says 360 and has these arrows pointing each way this basically allows you to still manipulate the video keeps it in 360 and then you may you know choose to use these keyframes and yeah, so that's basically kind of the normal editor as it was. The one next to it, if you tap that, it will start recording your face and it will stay on your face for the entire time. So this is kind of a face tracking. Um, this is if you just wanted to focus on your face for the entire video and it would export a video that looks exactly like you're seeing now. So if you know you didn't want to do any reframing, you just wanted to focus on your face, then this is how you would do that. So next to that button, we have this arrow and in a square. It will basically uh, focus the view on the forward facing lens. Now, this is not a good video to show you this. So let me show you an example here. I am uh, riding a bike. Um, the camera is attached to my bike. This is the view of the front facing lens and this is the view of the rear facing lens. So, so I could also do the face tracking thing, but that's not really what I wanna do. But when I tap the arrow and this will make the video focus on just the front facing lens. So as it plays, you can see the movement of the camera is focused or locked onto that front facing lens. So even if, when I turn the bike, the view turns with me. So I don't need to do any editing to make sure it's facing the way I want to. This, so the next icon here, this plus with a square, this will basically try and find some interesting views and move between them. So this will add some movement to your video. If we press this, it will start playing. And as you can see, it's added some movement. It's trying to come up with a kind of interesting video, again, using this AI algorithm. As you can see, yeah, it does add some movement. So this is all done without adding any keyframes. So those are three quick editing options, which basically allow you to create some videos without doing any keyframing uh, or any kind of advanced editing. So it's a way to, so you see right here at the bottom of the screen, we have three options again, quick editor and AI edits. Let's go to quick first. Now, what this does, this, this was also an option in the previous version, but it's just moved and changed slightly. So using Quick, we can use our phone's gyroscope to record video like this. As you can see, um, we can also use our fingers, but you can almost use your phone as if it was a camera and you're recording in the video, if that makes sense. And now we go on to the main editor. This actually isn't much different from the front screen. As you can see, it still has these options. The only real difference is we have here the timeline, which we can um, zoom across a little bit more easier. We also have this deep track function. So if we wanted to track a specific object, for example, if I wanted to focus on, create a little box around it, press start tracking and then just let it focus on that for however long you want. It usually does a pretty good job of keeping focus. And this is what will be embedded in your video. This is how the movements will look in the final video. I think it's gonna stop now. Oh yeah, it's kind of freaking out. But as you can see, it's done that. It's included those movements in the video. Frame cut essentially allows you to trim some of your video um, in the middle. So instead of trimming from the ends, if you wanted to select just a part of your clip, for example, here, just, I guess, the part where I go under the bridge. And I didn't want anything either side, so press confirm clip. But you could also then have something at the start as well. And this part, so these are the parts that will be exported. So it would cut out these, anything that's not highlighted yellow will not be included in the final video. The AI video is fairly self-explanatory. Just press that button and the app will try and come up with a video that adds all of the movements, focuses on things that it thinks is interesting, and yeah, try and make a full video without you doing anything. So you can obviously try it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Usually it's better to do the editing on your own, I believe, but, but if you want something quick, it's worth a shot. It does take a little while, as you can see, the longer the video, the more time it will take. So here we go, it's finished analyzing and this is the kind of video it thinks will look good. It will add some transitions, music, etc. 
the effect will work better if you weren't just on a bike going in a straight direction. It would work better if you were moving around a city, um, you know, different scenery and stuff. But yeah, that's the AI editor. So what I've shown you now is Insta360's way of trying to make the editing process quicker. These are all um, quick ways of editing. For the classic editor, which I've been using for keyframes, for all of the other options, it's a bit hidden on this diamond button here with the plus. Tap that and you actually get access to the most advanced editing and all of the stuff that we're kind of used to. So this is a kind of good video to practice on. This is where once you pick up on that diamond, you get taken to this screen here. And this is where you can add keyframes. This diamond button is now the new keyframe button. So if you wanted to change the direction of your video, go through the timeline, press the diamond button. This is how we create the unique effects that I show you in this course, basically telling the image or the video where to look at any one time. The closer they are together, the faster the keyframes will move, the further away, the slower they'll move. We also have the de-warp option. We also have the record option, which we looked at before. This is the moving. So some of these options are in more than one place. We have tracking, which is just deep track so I could track this whole if I wanted to track this person it works pretty well but we won't be doing that because I don't know who they are here we have movements which is a set of pre-built in movements which means again you don't have to do any keyframes there's actually loads more um, but you can see what's kind of going on here depending on which one you select it has a pre-built in movements some of them can look pretty cool. You can obviously experiment with these depending on the kind of video you're shooting. Multi-view is a, a very interesting option as well. Click that and you'll be able to have two different views in one video for the front facing, um, selfie facing camera and whatever you want to select here. So this is a really good example of that being used. I'm talking about this view and then I can show you it at the bottom screen as well. So that is making use of both lenses. I've seen this on TikTok and Instagram. You can have half views. You can have, you can have one view in the top corner and the other view here. If you wanted to reveal some more options, go to your timeline and just find a place where there's no keyframes, tap on it, and you'll see even more options appear here, which we have seen before. Speed, to increase the speed, create the hyperlapse effects. You can apply that to the entire clip or just a section. Color, this allows you to apply some filters, uh, adjust many of the color options. You can really drastically improve the, uh, the look of your video just by changing some of these settings really quickly. Even me doing this now, it looks a lot better. Motion ND applies a motion blur to your video which is better for uh, like cycling, skiing, something more action-based. Stats, uh, you can connect to a um, smartwatch or anything that monitors your health and you can have heart rates, stuff like that appear on your, um, on your video, which again, more for action stuff. And then we have some other kind of more basic stuff here like face filter. So guys, that's it. That is the, a quick overview of the Insta360 app. Those are pretty much all the options. The only other thing I've not gone through is this create a video where if we wanna combine several videos together, select them there. This is where we can combine several videos together. We can do the reframing and we can also add some transitions. Otherwise, the options are pretty much the same. This is just where you would combine several of your clips together. So guys, that's it. That is the Insta360 app in 2025, the new updated app.